So there's some shit happening on Twitter, some of it has been happening for a while now and some of it is just ramping up. Yes, we're talking about this stupid site again, anyway. So the very first thing I want to talk about is actually something that annoys me quite a bit. You know how when you go into the settings on Twitter you can see the personalize kind of option? Or it has the options to kind of show you ads that are based on places that you have been with cookies and the websites and stuff like that. If you've ever seen the thing where you look up something and then Google gives you an ad for it when you're on another site, it's pretty much just that. However, shit is starting to ramp up here and it's doing a bit more than that. So on around the 18th of December, Twitter was talking about how it's going to be basically even more censorious than it already is, targeting things that they don't like in people's bios, people's names, and basically everything that they claim is under the alt-right, which by now we know means basically everything that they don't like. But around that date as well, it's actually getting worse than that. See, if you don't have your personalized thing on, and if you don't allow them to track what you want as ads and stuff on, you're not allowed to log in essentially, you have to keep them on, and they're using that to try and track you through the cookies on the websites that you visit, and if there's some website that they personally don't like, they'll suspend you. Now obviously this is just something that they're planning to do, I don't know if something will happen where they won't go through with it, but it's something that they're very keen on doing, and I obviously have a big problem with that. As stupid as Twitter's TOS was before, at least you could kind of think, hey, I could do what I want to do on other sites and then I'll come back and Twitter will just be a different thing for me. But they're basically trying to do something where they want to control what you do outside of it as well. And they honestly think that they are that important in society that people will just start going on sites that only Twitter approves of in their other time rather than just deleting their accounts because Twitter is garbage. Which just shows how disconnected they are from reality. Now obviously you could just log out of Twitter and clear your cookies, that's fine, there are ways around it, but it's just kind of ridiculous that people have to do that in the first place. So the people of Twitter think that they are entitled enough to control what you do on your own time. And one of the funny things is, if they're using a bot for this, it doesn't have any context, so see if you have some lefty journal who isn't verified and they want to go to the Daily Stormer to do a story on them, the bot might pick that up and go, no, you can't log in anymore. So it's pretty much doing exactly what the demonetization and restricted mode thing on YouTube is doing. Either way, it's just going to get dumber. Anyway, I just wanted to say that, we'll see how it goes, and we'll move on to some other stuff. So we all know by now that being verified on Twitter is used as a special perk of following along with their politics rather than what is actually in the TOS and what its intended use is. I mean, yes, we all know this, I know you know this, but can we just take a moment to look at how ridiculous this is? So here you have a social media site who is being used by a lot of people, a lot of major people as well, and you think maybe these people should be professional with how they're running the site if this is the case, as in actually standing by their own terms of service and treating people fairly. I mean, just look at it for a second. If this was a startup company or some sort of really new social media service, something that had a lot of stuff to do and needed user input to improve, no one would like what Twitter is doing there. Everyone would be complaining about this because they're not actually treating verification like it actually is supposed to be used. But since Twitter is doing it, people who are getting benefits from it really don't give a shit. But why does it matter? Well, honestly, it doesn't have to. Most of the day you barely even notice it, really. But in terms of Twitter as a whole, it's just one of the things that really gives you proof as to what Twitter is doing and how they just don't give a shit about people unless those people share their own political views. Twitter is supposed to be using verification in the way that it tells you that a popular account belonging to a public figure is actually the public figure and not some sort of bot scam account, etc. Verification does not mean endorsement or that you just like them. You're just verifying someone or that's what it's supposed to mean. But obviously Twitter doesn't treat it that way. The phrase verify lefty journal, as I've used before, comes to mind. Twitter uses verification as a kind of perk or special treatment or reward of trust for people who have the right points. So with that being said, let's take this tweet here. This is who organized the white power rally where a woman was murdered. Then he mocked her on your platform. Why is he verified? You cannot ignore this. Your platform has been used to harass and attack. Your support of a white nationalist here is impossible to ignore. So normally, obviously, I would criticize this person in being wrong for thinking that verification on this platform means endorsement, but honestly, I'm not saying that here because th they're right. Don't get me wrong, this person is still whiny and dumb, but in this context here, 
the verification is endorsement, it's not being used correctly. Even this person here is verified, they were given these rewards as endorsement. And a lot of people would be verified until they do something. And Twitter doesn't like that thing, so they'll unverify this person. Take what happened to Milo Yiannopoulos. He apparently was saying misogynistic things and now he's unverified, even though his account is still his own. So going back to those tweets, is this person wrong? No. With that being said, now we can see this person as well as the people at Twitter want this endorsement sign and those rewards to strictly be for those who ideologically are the same as them. And this endorsement is, I guess you could say, another way of saying, you're not going to get banned yet, you're protected. Which is actually quite scary because as Twitter continuously gets more and more sensitive and becomes more and more of an echo chamber of sorts, we can see our days are really numbered on this platform as everyone starts to get banned. Which brings me to the next subject. Bunty King being banned and at least at the time of this video, deciding to not come back to the platform and I really can't blame him. Some people think he got suspended for really really old tweets and there was a bunch of speculation going around but then they found out that he actually got suspended because someone thought that it was mean of him to call out someone and criticize someone. These tweets are on a public platform unless you make your account private and people can criticize what you say. So Bunty criticized what someone said and in fact did the opposite of inciting harassment. He was just like, hugs. That's all he said, that's what Bunty does. And yet someone still got offended by that and so Bunty is banned for not harassing people essentially. And so Bunty says this, I guess it's goodbye Twitter. I don't know what I was suspended for and honestly I don't care. It became an overwhelmingly negative place loaded with dishonest nasty people looking to misrepresent me one way or another. Seeing some people there, even a couple people I followed, made my stomach churn. On top of that, my friends found me to be super distracted at all times, as I was often peering down at my phone, refreshing my mentions feed to see what was happening next. It was shit, honestly. Maybe, maybe, I'll hop back on Twitter after I've successfully ramped up the other platforms. Am I kind of sad? Yes, I am. I met so many amazing people on Twitter, formed friendships and was authentically myself for the first time in my life. It's shit that it's all gone with the tap of a couple buttons. Anyway, you're all amazing community and I love you guys. Honestly, it's not surprising to see how toxic Twitter is. I'm not surprised at all. Everyone gets super frustrated. I mean, on top of the verification thing, just everything else. There's the stupid filters that block low quality posts, which are only deemed low quality by people at Twitter who have their own opinions that they hold up as fact. So you don't really get to see what's on your feed anyway, even if you put all the filters off like I have done, the stupid little sensor box still pops up and you have to click it away every single time. And even so, you'll see something that has like 17 replies and you might only see 10 of them. You don't know what those other ones are, you don't know if you'd agree with them, but Twitter's like, no you definitely wouldn't because I won't. There's the Twitter throttling theory, but they basically make it so your tweets aren't really seen by anyone and they stifle you. And there's also the really, really smug, stupid people who have the verification and think they're untouchable so they go around just spouting stupid shit. And all this does is create an environment where you have to tiptoe around every single thing and you become very frustrated. Everyone is on edge, it's not surprising. If anyone's planning on making something like this, just look at Twitter for what not to do. And no one, I mean no one, wants those stupid, verified lefty journos opinions forced down their throat, so Twitter is shit. So what do we learn from this? Well, if you've listened this far, I'll wrap it up with this. Journalism is like a cactus. You can take good care of it, shine it up and make it look pretty, but at the end of the day, it's still full of pricks.